What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Joe's Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new case from NZXT, which is the H700i. If you guys aren't familiar with this case, it is one of three that just launched from NZXT a couple weeks ago. They also launched an H400i, which is the micro ATX variant, and then there is an H200i, which is the mini ITX version as well. So they all look very similar, of course, in different form factors, and this is, of course, the ATX uh, size. There is quite a bit to mention about this case, and I'm going to do my best to mention everything, but I also don't want to take too long, so I'm going to try to run through it as quickly as possible. To give you guys an idea of how big this ATX version of the case is, it measures in at 230 millimeters wide, 494 millimeters front to back, and of course with a height of the with the feet of 516 millimeters. Looking at the case from the outside, we have a solid front bezel like we've seen on other NCXT cases, which continues all the way to the top of the case and the rear of the case as well. Uh, there is no fan grills, and we'll kind of get to that in a quick second. Continuing on with the shape of the case, you notice that they have included a nice tempered glass panel with the tinted edges, of course, and that is inlaid into the side of the case rather than sitting flush mount with the edge of the case. Notice at the edges of the case we have that nice red perforated metal and of course it's not just for visual but it's also functional for airflow of the case. Of course the front bezel is removable by pulling from the bottom of the case and then popping the whole thing out. Of course that will reveal the magnetic dust filter that's top to bottom that NZXT has pre-installed. Uh, and of course that is to keep the three Air F 120mm fans that they included uh, from sucking in a tad of dust which is obviously nice to have. As far as dust filtration goes, we also have an additional dust filter at the rear of the case under the power supply, which also comes out pretty easily. Moving to the front of the case, we have our two HD audio connectors, two USB 2.0 connectors, and dual USB 3.0 connectors, which if you guys notice are a nice shade of NZXT purple. There is no fan grill on this top panel, and of course that's because of those nice perforated holes on the side of the case. Now to make access to this top area of the case simpler, rather than only allowing access on the inside of the case, you can remove the top bezel once the front bezel has been removed, just by pulling up at the front of the case and then popping the rest of the case off. I do like what NZXT did here with the top bezel, allowing us to kind of hide all of our equipment inside the case, rather than having that honeycomb uh, fan grill on the top bezel like we typically see in cases like this. Now moving back to that front glass panel, one thing to mention, uh, being that it's inlaid, it's nice that NZXT has also included some, uh, I guess you would say, thicker thumb screws that kind of allow you to have a little bit more grip on the thumb screw uh, and keep those fingerprints off the glass. Obviously you're not going to be opening up your case all the time, but that is one area that seems to collect fingerprints horribly on these tempered glass cases is when the thumb screws are really uh, you know, narrow and of course then your fingers basically are wiping the glass as you're taking the panel off. Now moving inside the case you'll notice NZXT has included three removable SSD trays, two on the top of the shroud and one on the front. What I really like about the design here is they did another tool list tray design. Um, the trays basically clip into the perforated holes that are pre-drilled onto the case and then of course the front mount SSD uh, is, is held to one location, but the top allows you to kind of be a little bit more modular and move those SSD trays wherever you'd like. If you guys haven't noticed already, NZXT has redesigned their cable management rail from the S340 and S340 Elite, of course, uh, for this H700, all the H series cases actually. Um, and I think that it's a little bit more in your face and I really like the design actually. Uh, one thing that would be nice to see is maybe a little less depth on that rail to accommodate thicker 24 pins, but uh, obviously the, the cable management rail is removable if that's something you wanted to get rid of, uh, if you don't like the, the look of it. But uh, to me, I think it looks great. If it just had a little bit less depth, it would be probably a little bit more accommodating for cables though. Along with the triple 120 millimeter Air F fans at the front of the case, NZXT has also included one 140 millimeter Air F fan at the rear exhaust of the case. Uh, there is room for a 120 millimeter fan if you'd rather remove that 140 at the rear. There's also room for triple 120s at the top or dual 140s at the top and of course dual 140s at the front if you'd like to eliminate those triple 120s. Speaking of airflow, if you guys want to install a radiator at the front of the case, you can do that. Of course, you could install the fans on the rear side of the radiator inside the case or you could install them on the front side of the case in the bezel and they will fit fine. Keep in mind, obviously, installing them in the front bezel, although allowed in clearance wise, it's going to kind of eliminate that uh, dust filter. So that's one thing you have to kind of consider when you're trying to figure out 
what layout you'd rather go for, but you can do a push-pull configuration in the front of the case if that's something you want to do. Moving to the back of the case, this is where you'll really notice the H-Series cases become very innovative, uh, beginning with the push button rear door release. Yes, push button. Uh, this is kind of, I think this is the first time I've seen this. It makes it super easy to access the back of the case. I can't believe nobody's ever done this before, but uh, I think it was a great idea and I really love that they did, did it that way. Um, now, the biggest thing you're gonna see here, obviously, is their patent pending cable management rails. Um, these pretty much allow you to guide all of your cables in specific directions, and it really does simplify uh, the process of cable management. I'm like the serial committer of uh, just shoving cables in the back of the case. I know that's probably not a good thing to admit, being that I uh, have a tech channel, but I, uh, you know, I don't like spending a lot of time managing cables, and this made it a lot easier. Uh, obviously, I did a full build in this case, which I'm going to kind of talk about at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, I think this was a great design. The implemented um, Velcro straps made things a lot easier, so that's great. Also notice there is two removable SSD trays at the rear. Of course, they added cable management rails for those as well. And then, of course, there is dual 3.5 inch drive caddies, which are kind of modular and stackable, as well as movable front to back a little bit. Um, so that was also a nice implementation. There's plenty of storage room here. So basically we have those five SSD trays now and uh, dual three and a half inch drive caddies, which again are removable if you'd like to store other equipment down at the bottom of your chassis. While we're kind of looking at the basement of the case, one of the thing to mention is NZXT also did implement their PSU frame, which allows you to mount that piece to your power supply and then easily slide your power supply in and do a toolless install once that bracket is attached to your power supply. Now that we've looked at all the specs of the case and what makes this a great case to build in, why don't we go ahead and look at what makes the H700i really special and that is the smart device the NZXT is included. Obviously this is a first revision of that device, but basically the purpose of it is to take ambient noise of the fans in your case at a baseline of idle uh, under a moderate load and then of course under full load and it measures the sound of the fans against the performance of your PC and gives you, uh, I guess, the best of both worlds performance without being too loud. I'm not gonna be diving too deep into the setup of the smart device today. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do is create a completely separate video that kind of goes through the best way to set that up. Obviously, there's a few people out there who have already set this up on their video and had a few issues, so I wanna kind of get the process nailed down and then give you guys um, the best example of how to set it up. So I'm hoping to have that video up shortly. In addition to that smart functionality we mentioned, you also can control up to nine fans in this case. Uh, as far as RGB functionality, you can add up to four LED strips or five air RGB fans, and you can control the RGB on those devices. If you wanted to have air RGB fans and the LED strips from NZXT, you would however need to purchase a Hue Plus separately. I have to say this case was a real joy to build in. Uh, I did actually put together a full time lapse, which I'm not going to include in this video, but I did capture all the footage and I'm doing my best to keep up with editing that stuff for you guys. So I'll probably have that coming up in the next few days if you guys did want to see how a build in this case would go. Uh, the material of the build, uh, the material of the case itself, I should say, uh, is great. Really happy with the quality of the material. The design was great. The functionality is amazing. I think NZXT did a really great job with designing this case with the builder in mind, whether it's somebody that's really well versed in building PCs or somebody that's just getting started out. It's a great, great choice for. Uh, I think that the controller just off of my first thoughts, and I'm not going to go too far in depth again, but uh, first thoughts on the controller, I think NZXT has the right thought in mind at simplifying the process and creating um, a more uh, user-friendly interface with cam. Uh, I think sometimes it ends up becoming a little more challenging uh, in the beginning so I'm hoping that things are going to get optimized and again hopefully I can get a guide for you guys on how to set up that smart device with this case in the near future. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and enjoyed the first look at the H700i. If you guys would like me to take a look at the H400 or the H200i Please let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys want to hear about it or want to see with it. Uh, of course, if you have any questions or feedback, I'm always happy to hear it down in the comment section. Again, if you did enjoy the video, I would appreciate it if you could give me a huge thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys prefer. And of course, if you want to see more tech videos like this in the future, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again to NZXT for sharing this case with me and allowing me to share it with you guys. Uh, and until next time, guys, this has been Joe's Tech. 
I'll see you in the next video.